Cooling proxies. We're away, David. Okay. Mary, tell me about the first moment when you said to yourself, I am Mary Magdalene. Well, remembering who I am has not been a simple uh, first moment. Uh, if you like, I had a first moment of remembering who I was, and then I became very scared about that. So, um, so the first moment that that happened uh, was with AJ. Uh, we were travelling overseas, and. Um, I got up one morning um, and we were just having breakfast, he was making breakfast, I was listening to a song and, and um, I had come on this trip with him uh, knowing that he felt he was Jesus, I didn't really agree with that, <laughs> I thought um, the teachings were beautiful and um, they were about love and humility and truth and, and many things that I really resonated with and I knew who he thought I was. Um, I knew who he thought he was, and I really, frankly, uh, was a little uh, condescending about it, I suppose. I thought, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'll go along. I don't really think there's anything to this whole thing. Um, but I'm very interested in what's being taught. Uh, what happened for me was really shocking for me, is in that I suddenly um, began to have a huge emotional experience of the loss and death of him. Um, which was quite intense uh, and sudden and I, um, in this moment, uh, we were routinely going about our morning and suddenly I was hit with a, a massive feeling of his death, of him abandoning me, um, of an extreme loss of him and I knew it was him um, and I sobbed for about four hours uh, and I felt almost angry, angry at this person who'd never done anything uh, in, in this life, if I held on to my previous views, um, to upset me or abandon me or hurt me. Um, and so for four hours I just cried and sobbed. What were you remembering? Can you give me the sort of details? <clears throat> and also, sorry to interrupt, can you not say him? Can you say AJ, Jesus or, Jay, and, and, and <clears throat> when you, you need to say Mary Magdalene as well. You haven't said that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you're right. Sorry. Yeah. So, so, do you want me to go back to the no, 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 press no. on, press on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, okay. so um, during that, that time mm. when I was sobbing and crying, I suppose I wasn't having the memory or the feeling, he is Jesus, I am Mary Magdalene. I was having the intense grief experience of the death of, a, of my husband, um, which I knew to be him, which I felt to be him. Um, Were you perhaps, do you think you might have been worried about what was going to happen to him in this life? You, you're, you're saying that you were remembering yes. the past, aren't you? Yes, and it, it, it was um, as real to me as if it had just happened. Um, so for myself remembering these things um, and I've had many experiences like this since um, which often come uh, they're not things that I intellectually anticipate that I would uh, recall uh, I suppose um, in my imagination if I thought oh, okay um, this man believes he's Jesus he believes I, or you know maybe I'm Mary Magdalene perhaps I'll remember some beautiful love story between us and it'll all be uh, rosy and fairy and I'll have a mystical kind of uh, enlightening experience of who I you know who I am perhaps that's what I would have imagined um, I, I never would have imagined that the first uh, recollection would be one of deep grief uh, and it certainly didn't feel like a fear. It didn't feel like something that I was anticipating happening. Um, it felt like something that had just occurred. Um, and it was an experience without... Um, a, the best way I can describe it, of having these memories, is like, it's like... Um, say, for example, you're crossing the road and you get hit by a bus. And so when that happens, and when you remember it, you remember seeing the bus coming towards you, you remember the pain of it happening, you remember the shock, or, you know, the, the you know, sadness, whatever occurs beyond that point. 
for myself having these memories it is like exactly as real as the bus hitting me the pain the grief the shock but I don't have the visual of the bus hitting me so can, I, can you tell us about uh, any the, I know you have other memories don't you many by now yeah 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 so t tell us because that detail is re very fascinating of course right to, to, yeah. to us yeah. you know. okay yeah <laughs> sure um so i guess to date i've had many memories of a life um lived in the first century with a family um I remember being uh, some events in my early childhood that were quite traumatic in that life um, in, and I remember being excluded from my family home because I became pregnant um, so I've had a lot of uh, grief and trauma uh, I, I suppose many hours of crying and, and feeling about those things um, uh, many memories about um, a particular memory about the loss of the child that I was pregnant with, so the death of a child. Um, and then um, memories of a life until I met Jesus. What, um, How did your baby die? Um, uh, so um, I, was, I was excluded from the family home and I left and I was living in quite a basic way i was actually sold as a slave and when i gave birth to the child um i knew that they wanted to take that child from me and so i ran away with the child all of these memories have come to me um emotionally and they form quite a clear story now but it has been over a period of time yeah um and so I was living in a street sort of a situation with this newborn infant and I needed to leave the child to go and try and find food. Um, uh, in doing that and coming back I was detained by soldiers um, and harassed and um, because of that I didn't make it back to the child and when I came back the infant had passed. Uh, Why was it? Was it sick? Uh. <laughs> no, we've just been a long period of time, like six hours or something, since I had. It was alone. It, it hadn't had food. It was, both of us were quite hungry and dehydrated, and by that time. It's a very sad story. It is a sad story. <laughs> I feel quite nervous uh, yeah. explaining yeah, it. To yeah, you. yeah, sure. Yeah, it's so been quite a raw um, emotion to deal with. Yeah. So you've still got a long way to go, haven't you, to recover those... The memories? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the process is a very emotional one and um, it is the process of remembering a, a whole life. Can I talk about emotions because I know that's very central. One of the yes. things I notice, mm -hmm. and I've talked to a lot of people now, is how close emotions are to the surface. People cry mm -hmm. easily. Uh, Just lovely, isn't it, that we're not uh, avoiding our emotions? Tell me, but why, but the emotions are often emotions of pain. There's a lot of people, people around AJ are feeling a lot of pain. I, I and would so do you. At times I do, but I also feel a great deal of joy. Yeah, the kind of joy I've never really experienced before in this life. Like I feel quite a lot of contentment because I have stopped avoiding these very painful emotions that, um, that I feel all of us carry very painful emotions. And part of this teaching is that um, we carry these injuries inside of us and they create a lot of suffering in our lives. And when things, you know, things don't go right, it's, it's as the result of, of holding on to these, to these injuries and griefs that we carry from childhood. So, so you make, yeah, go on. Do you want me to answer that? I think yes. I didn't answer that question yes. with your answer. It's all right? That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, that's all right. We'll probably come back. Yeah. So you meet, <coughs> a, you meet AJ. <coughs> now, I mean, one, one of the remarkable ironies of your life. Yes. 
is the role of your parents. My parents? Yes. Now tell me, tell me they, uh, uh, tell me that whole story about your parents and introducing. Well, you know. Oh, I see. You yeah. mean the irony in that yeah. um, my parents were first coming to talks uh, held mm -hmm. by AJ. Yeah. Um, yeah so us. okay. Yeah. So the way that I first met AJ was um, at a talk in my parents' home. They had invited him to be there and, and give a talk to people, much like the talks that you attended this weekend, although on a smaller scale. Yeah, and um, he just happened to be in our living room, <laughs> are giving a talk, and that's how we met, yeah. And isn't it true your parents that actually said to you, I, I think AJ thinks, well, tell me what they said. Uh, they, they told, uh, my parents told me that, uh, that they had found out through someone else that AJ felt that um, I was his soulmate. Yeah. And um, he, he, at the time, I was going through quite a big life change, and he didn't feel that it was. He and he was leaving to go overseas for uh, six months, so he didn't feel it was a particularly good time to land that on me. Um, but my parents happened to find out through someone else, and they felt um, a duty, I suppose, or a, a desire to be honest with me about what they found out. Yeah. So what's happened with you and your parent, your family? With my family. Yes. Yeah. It's an unhappy story, yeah? Yeah, I feel quite sad about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, just that they, um, they don't accept what I want to do with my life at the moment. They don't agree with um, the way I'm living it. But they introduced you. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, I really can't speak for them, um, but I feel that they have some fears about... Um, me being attacked, uh, that my life is now becoming quite public, I suppose, and um, I suspect they feel quite afraid about that. Um, I feel they also feel that uh, in some way my emotional experience has been uh, implanted in me by AJ or something very sinister, which uh, is not the case, but I suspect that they feel that because. It, they're feeling very challenged about what it is I'm remembering and they're feeling challenged that I, I want to be really honest with them in, in our family and in our relationships. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I've read the stuff that your brother has written. He's read, led a real charge out there. Yeah. I mean, he, I think he hates AJ, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so, which is, it's very sad for me. So um, we need to do a pick up with my brother. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, well, I, I yeah. guess you say, yeah, I think my brother would probably hate so to say something about that. Oh, this is not nice to say. Uh, so, yeah, I know that my brother has, um, he's got so many issues with AJ and he's been very, um, almost hateful on the internet with some of the things that he's written about AJ and myself. Some things that are blatantly untrue. Um, sadly, Josh has only met AJ uh, on a number of uh, very few occasions um, and spent very little time speaking with him or speaking with me about what it is I feel, what I'm going through and what it is we believe. Um, but Josh feels very protective I suppose of my parents and he feels that he would very much like me to come back to the family fold uh, uh, and not change. <laughs> and I really would like to change and grow in love. So. That's, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Now, in the last couple of years, you've also become mediumistic, haven't you? Would that be right? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about that experience? Sure. So, yeah. I had never had much experience with uh, mediumship or talking to spirits. It's never been uh, a part of my sphere, I suppose, before um, before meeting AJ, I suppose. Um, and. I never considered myself someone who would be able to talk to spirits or have that sense. Although since, um, I guess, developing that skill a little, I realised that I have probably been aware of spirits all of my life um, and spirit, different spirits in different situations and they've probably guided me quite a, bot, uh, quite a lot at different times. Um, 
since I met AJ, I've started to become more sensitised, I suppose, to that skill that I have. And um, I do channel often uh, from my guides. They assist me in uh, dealing with my emotions, connecting to God. Uh, yeah, and sometimes we assist spirits who are in quite uh, sad or dark conditions to help them. Have you got sort of like, I, I don't know, this might be the right sort of question, but do you like have favourites? I mean, familiar ones that, that you are like in a fairly close relationship with? Sure, there, so, I have a, ah, a particular. Tell us, yeah, tell us about that. So I have a particular, I have a group of guides, I suppose, who um, are concerned with my spiritual welfare. Um, and some of them are women that I knew in the first century, one of them called Rachel, and um, I, she's what I would call my guide, and I speak to her pretty much daily, like I sit and channel from her, yeah. Wow, so, so the, it's that the, it's the close? Very It's close. like a conversation? Yes, very much so. I mean, I've seen channeling before, it's often quite a bit of a process, you know, where the person actually, you almost yeah. seem to undergo a bit of a change. Does that happen to you? No. No, right. So uh, it's, a, it's a very... So we need a clean grab about what, how, how it happens. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for myself, yeah. I consider myself quite a pragmatic, pragmatic kind mm. of a grounded person. And I, I have to confess to being quite cynical in the past about people with feathers and crystals and mm. trances and all kinds of things. I'm not saying that that's all rubbish, but just for myself, I, I'm not really into that. So when I channel, it's just a very organic process for myself. It's very much emotional, like I feel. Mm. It's like um, sitting with you, like I can feel some of your emotions, I can feel what you want to communicate with me and when I'm communicating with Rachel it's very similar to that for myself. I don't undergo any special ritual or okay. I just sit, I say a prayer and I sit with my notebook and ask what guidance she has for me. Oh so it comes, it comes in thoughts rather than you don't speak? At times I speak. Oh right. Sometimes, yeah. Could, could, could you, I mean I don't, could you do it now for us? I no. Mean, no. <laughs> I mean if well, they're that close. You know what I mean? Um, would you... I'm not sure what, what would you like for me to um, convey to you. I, I don't feel that it's particularly well, uh, appropriate. Uh, okay, well, I'm just wondering if, if they've got any comments about what's happening now, for example. I mean, you must have talked to them about this whole filming business, you know. Sure. I mean, I and just... The, or what about one of the disasters that's happened on the, in the world today? What? As in the tsunami. <laughs> would, would, would she comment on the, uh, something like the Japanese tsunami or not? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um. I mean, it'd be terribly sort of interesting, I mean, in a sense, to see. Uh, I see guess. That happening. I like, guess because, because there is a method of channeling which yeah. is called uh, trance channeling, if you like, and that is where the spirit completely overcloaks the yeah. person and speaks through the person. I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. So, um, I can convey to you that, like, I can feel Rachel. Uh, with me today, she's like just giving me a lot of loving support to be honest and truthful, like in my um, emotional truth with you, um, uh, encouraging me to um, to express sincerity and love, I suppose, in this in this exchange. All yeah, sorry, go ahead. Can I talk to her? I mean, can, would she, if I sort of, if I say, would she have something to say to me? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think that I feel a little um, nervous and uncomfortable just to do something like that on camera. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, um, you know, that's fine. I that's, that's, that's you know, like, I just okay. feel... Um, no, I was just wondering... I, because I mean, I'm feeling a little bit anxious myself, okay, right, right. it wouldn't be a very yeah, clear yeah, yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah. Just watch your ums and ahs and hums. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, so you've got Rachel. That's. Uh, yes. I mean, she's obviously. I uh, probably if, uh, would. She'd be one of your she's most familiar. She's a friend. Familiar. She's uh, a yeah. friend. To okay. Me. Yeah. And you, and you are you saying you you remember her from your first life? Um, it's. I don't really feel it's like my first life. I feel it's, it just feels like one whole life. Uh, that I have lived, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like um, I have memories of living a life in the first century as well as being in the spirit world and then being 
in, reincarnated. So it's it's like one complete life that so it doesn't feel like that was my first life then there's a blank and now there's this life it feels very continuous for me yeah um i do remember rachel however um because she was with me at the crucifixion and around that time and i still am blocking a lot of that emotion because it's quite intense for me i've connected to it many times but the full weight of the grief involved I still block quite a bit so some of my memories with her are also attached to that time and so it's, it's not clear it's something that she uh, yeah would like to talk to me about more mm. so that I can deal with the emotions involved yeah and we can have a closer connection tell me about your plans I mean we heard yesterday uh, a grand vision. Yeah, it is grand, isn't it? Tell, tell us just a bit. Look, it's just, it's, begin by saying, we have a vision. And then, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, AJ and myself have a vision, and that is that um, people will come to um, know God and to know themselves, to be their most um, pristine selves, if you like, the selves that God created. Um, that are full of creativity and passion and love and desire and all of these beautiful qualities. Um, and we have a vision that we might start an organisation, if you like, that becomes almost a way of life for people, that they know how it is to um, live according to the laws of love um, in doing everyday tasks. And in that process, that they might come to release their emotions, the things that they're carrying that actually block them connecting to God. So in a way it's a very simple vision, it's a very um, succinct and small plan in that it might be just digging a garden but in a, in a way of life that upholds the principles of love and hopefully that might grow, hopefully that might grow, but hopefully people might come to see something in the people who are living that um, in that way that they might come to see something that's beautiful there as well and perhaps they might like to um, know God as a result. Ten years in down the track, tell me what, what are we going to see? Wow, ten years down the track, it's, it's like a, a long time it feels like. I feel like in the last six months I've changed so much so um, it's my dream that we might see um, people who are at one with God, people who are so close to God that they have released anything um, within them that is in disharmony with love and they're living in a very creative way, totally in harmony with the environment around them, with the people around them. Um, that, that is like the ultimate dream that that might occur on earth. Um, Tell me about the organisation, give me a feel for what this organisation is going to do. It's going to be almost like a sort of a national, an international government, really, isn't it? Can you give me a feel for what this is going to look like? I'm talking yeah. about God's way of love. <coughs> yes, yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry. So. <sighs> you can actually start it by saying God's way of love organisation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so the God's way of love organisation. Um, is really the vision is to create a way of working together a way of um, a way that many people can work together to create things to gain new wisdom to uh, create things physically to communicate with the spirit world to um, regenerate the damage that's been done by humankind on the earth and the organization aims to give people a structure to work together to do those things. What's going to happen to government, like like secular government? I mean, you. Um, and what I heard yesterday was that in time, secular government will just fade away. It yes. Would... Yeah, do you believe that? Well, I believe that that's up to the will of everyone else on earth. Secular government's not going to fade away unless a lot of people decide that they would like to act in harmony with love. And that would forfeit the need for secular government, wouldn't it? If we all just made a personal decision to act in harmony with love and care and compassion for everything around us, inclu including ourselves, but also our environment and everyone around us, 
secular government would, as a matter of course, become defunct. Now that's a beautiful dream, but that's a dream that I can't personally make happen for everyone on the planet. I can, I can step into that dream with that vision in mind, but then it will depend on, on the will of everyone else if they would like to join me in that dream. Have you been cagey? I mean, you must have more tangible visions than that. I mean, I mean, we're talking about an organisation, which is now highly complex. That's a very complex structure yes. that we heard about, yep. right? Yep. There's teams, uh, yep. there's divisions, there's... Uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about setting up sanctuaries. Yeah. I mean, this is a very complex and sophisticated sort of structure, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't see how it's casual at all. I, I don't see how it's complex either. It's just a group of people who want to come together and, um, and work towards this vision. Uh, yes, there will be some disorganisation initially, I think, because there are so many teams. And because people in their nature have varying passions and they're going to want to act towards them. Um, personally, for myself, I still feel like I'm quite a small person with a big dream and so I don't have any um, uh, feeling that uh, we shall, uh, you know, expand beyond whatever it is <laughs> that we achieve. I just want to step humbly into the dream and with the possi hold in, the po in my heart the poss possibility that it might grow. Um, I feel that AJ is perhaps more connected to a feeling that it will and it's going to be really big. But for myself, I still feel within myself um, I have so much growth to to achieve. Um, and the more I grow, the more possible I feel it will be that so much will change. Yeah. Now look, I've got to ask you again about yeah. your, your infamous blog entry, God and My <laughs> Vagina. I mean. You were so brave. Can you tell us about that? I mean, that's a good uh, Yeah, yeah. So you'd like to hear about my blog and specifically about the um, entry entitled uh, God and My Vagina. Yeah. Uh, so um, I started the blog because I, I felt that um, I'd like to be vulnerable about what it is I'm going through. Um, because a lo there's a lot of supposition and, and also there's many people who come to our talks and who listen to us and um, who are endeavouring to step into this journey as well of emotional healing so that they can connect with God. So um, I started the blog in order to be vulnerable about that. Now part of my healing and growth has been around sexuality and um, <laughs> Hence the blog post, which is it chronicles a little of my um, the processing that I needed to go through in order to uh, feel more sexually whole and fulfilled. Um, it was never my intention to be sensationalist, but I knew that perhaps uh, speaking about one's vagina publicly <laughs> is. But in my humble opinion, w many women would do well to heal some of the issues they have around their own anatomy and around their own sexuality. So I felt that it would be good for us to be more vulnerable about such things. Because uh, for myself, it was a huge healing. Yeah. That's a good answer. By the way, are we worried about the crows? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Are they yeah, do you want to get some wild sound? Yeah, we'll just we'll get some of <coughs> them. Okay. Okay. Well, well, get it now while they're on. Yeah, yeah. Quite Shh. Enough, isn't it? Yeah. Cut it in. Yeah. Your hands, mate. Maybe no, no, just clapping your hands will be fine. I'll be headed over. Up the gun. Is that what you want? No, mate, it's more of just an exclamation. <laughs> I'm so sorry about all We're not... just trying to move the crows on, darling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, 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 they've become part of the whole scene here. <laughs> okay. Come on. Well, they've obviously got some okay, very serious comments quiet. to make. They're quiet and we're still rolling. Okay. Um, 
They're too close. Mm. Yeah. Where are they? They just. Well, look, we're, I'm I'm getting pretty. I'm I'm pretty right here. What do you think? I think I think we need a bit about uh, the unification of the two souls to become soul. Ah, soul mates. Yes, yes, that's, yes. That's, yeah, that's, that's, it is. And, it is. Uh, and then a little bit about um, when you uh, witnessed the crucifixion. Because we asked that with uh, Cornelius yesterday, yeah, of course. and he was yeah. He was there. Well, see, he, he see, was... we can piece together a little thing here. Yeah, I really, um, I really want to be open and vulnerable with you guys about that, but it's so uh, nerve-wracking to just speak about it openly. But anyway, let's do it. Yeah. See, Cornelius told us, uh, and with some emotion too, I must say, about that moment when he was suddenly confronted by the prospect of driving the stake in, and, and uh, you were there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, um, so I have memories of being at the crucifixion, um, which are quite intense and um, probably the most shocking of the memories that I have um, connected to, because um, there's so much emotion of loss and horror, I suppose. Uh, it, in those memories, uh, remember being there and just the intense feeling of some my soulmate, someone I feel very connected to, suffering immensely. Um, although I feel I suffered more than he did, um, but just because of the development in love that he had at that time. But for myself, it was excruciating to watch basically the annihilation of the person that I love the most and with the knowledge that I was carrying a child um, yeah so there's some very intense emotions surrounding that that I still have not um, fully come to terms with but it's a very real um, memory for me uh, emotion within me um, that I have never experienced anything like that before in, in this life. You know, I've never witnessed torture um, or experienced the loss of a spouse or a parent. And yet I, I feel, and I know that it's, it's Yeshua, it's AJ, that, that it, who I'm losing in those memories. And it feels very uh, traumatic, yeah. Do you fear that it's going to happen again? Yeah, I do fear that someone may hurt him, yep. Especially I've become to fear that as I have started to connect to these emotions of losing him once before. Um, so I have a lot of uh, feelings that that may happen again and how devastating that may be again. Um, although as I progress through these emotions, the fear lessens. Um, because naturally what it is I'm fearing is the extent of the emotions that I already have inside of me. Um, yeah. So as I process them, I guess, comes the knowledge that while I would hate to lose him and I love him so much, um, if I lost him, I could deal with the emotions. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Are you sure? Am I sure mm. that I could deal with it? Right now, I would be devastated. Yeah. I do believe that we can reach a growth in love where we um, no longer experience death as a huge loss and trauma. Um, but for myself, if I lost AJ right now, I would be devastated, yeah. Do you have fears for yourself? Maybe your family has fears for you, don't they, really? That you, well, their fears are more of a sort of... What do you think they think about? Do I think you've gone mad, do you think? Oh. Uh, sadly, um, my brother has said to me that he thinks I've gone mad, yeah, um, which doesn't feel very nice. Um, I don't really know how, what, how they've come to feel about it all. Um, every time I've tried to have communications with them, they feel... Um, adamant that I should just leave AJ or I should, you know, that he is just bad or just controlling me. And 
out of love for him and for myself, it's very hard for me to just remain in those constant um, interactions where I'm really being told something that isn't true <laughs> and I'm being told that I'm wrong constantly. Um, I feel that's very different from someone just having a natural openness or even a concern for someone. I feel that if someone is sincere and loving in that, then they're not uh, badgering, angry or, um, or judgmental and angry, you know. Um, Sounds like some addiction going on there, do you think? Certainly. I mean, I feel that most of our emotional addictions originate in our family. And look, I have compassion for my family because they have grown up in a family full of addictions and, and every, every family on the planet has some addictions. And, I, and if we take away even the fact of who I am and who AJ is, I'm the first person in my family who is starting to break down the addictions. So for any family, I feel that that is challenging and I do have compassion for that. Now look, over the last couple of days I've talked to people and I, I, one of the questions I asked them and that, uh, is have you found your soulmate? Now you have. Yes. For most people that is a very difficult question. What is a soulmate? So God created, creates us as a complete soul um, which has masculine and feminine qualities and at the when we're conceived, that soul, one, you know, half of that soul splits um, and is born, and the same process occurs for the other half of the soul. Now, that soul can be ma man, uh, male and female, or female, female, male, male, um, but God creates us as one complete soul, and then we incarnate to experience, um, to learn to experience ourselves essentially so that we, we come to know ourselves. Before incarnation, we have no concept of our own personality. Um, uh, through the process of incarnation, we come to know ourselves. And during that process, when we come to feel, which is why we place so much e emphasis on our true self and ridding ourselves of addictions and fears, during that process, if we long to God, we come to know God, but we'll also begin to attract our soulmate back into our life. So, so, so the only way you're going to find a soulmate is if you are walking with God. No, no. You, no. Can, you can find a soulmate. You can find and you a can soulmate. Be, yep. Could you find a soulmate in natural love? Yes. Just oh, okay. So we're just okay. speaking over each other. Yep. Then, so okay, right. Yeah. 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 Um, so it, uh, God created the process that you. Because the other half of your soul is very similar to you in in character and passions and their nature, obviously you're the one soul. You're different expressions, like you and your life experience affects how you how that is expressed. But God created a process so that it is very likely that you will at least meet your soulmate in your life, whether God is in your life or not. Whether you recognise that soulmate is another thing. The reason that um, I feel it's such a beautiful process to involve God is because in, in this process of clearing my emotions, I become more connected to God and more connected to my true self, and that enables me to recognize my soulmate better. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, but I talk to married couples, yep. and they don't know whether their spouse is their soulmate. Oh, what a strange... How do you go back into a relationship with your spouse at that moment, thinking, I don't know if you're my soulmate? Mm. Well, I agree. It, that's quite confronting, isn't it? Uh, if you have a desire to be with your soulmate, you would hope that you're married to your soulmate. Yeah. Unfortunately, many of us, are, uh, as we talked about on the weekend, you know, many of us are living in a lot of error and addiction in our lives, which is not our true selves. So often we form relationships that are based on, um, uh, like, I'll give this to you, if you, you give that to me, we both feel quite good, uh, I mean emotionally, I give you something, you give me something back, we both feel quite good and we come to feel that that is love. Now those things may, the thing I give to you, for example, if I'm a woman, as, um, as I am, I'm a woman with a lot of fear. So if I, if I come to a man and he's like strong and he's going to protect me, I can think, wow, I'm really attracted to that man. 
Now, my attraction is not based on my pure soul or my desires or my passions, my per unique personality. It's based on me avoiding my fear, is it not? So if I um, come to you and you're a man who's going to protect me, I can think, wow, this is the love of my life. And in fact, it could just be because I want to avoid my fear. So that's why as we go through our emotions and we start to release them, come to know our true nature more completely, we can recognize our soulmate more. And perhaps we will find that the person we're in a relationship with is not our soulmate. But at that point, I will also have grown in love. So I will treat that person with love, regardless of whether it's a romantic love or a platonic love. Does that make sense? Yes, that's uh, good. I'm <coughs> that's good. <coughs> I'm right. Just stay there, guys, if you will. Well done. Thank you. Paul, um, Dave, yep. could you shuffle now to your right for me? Keep coming, buddy. Slightly further. And even further, mate. That's it. Okay, good man. Now I'll get you to lean forward for me. And sway to your right slightly. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this. I just need two shots of cover here. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. That's better. And right, Mary, if you'll listen, David's going to talk to you. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. So it's as if you're listening to me asking you yep. questions. Mm. By the way, I like the way the place is looking. I mean, the. It's terrific, isn't it? Just let, let the, uh, the place go. Let the place go. Yeah. Just a little serious if we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, you're, you're just responding yeah. to when Dave is asking his question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the God's way of love, really, I mean, it is huge. The implications of it. I mean, it, it, this is for the first time you are doing something that has political implications down the track, Def definitely, because... Lean right, forward, mate, lean forward, yeah, you're blocking yeah. the light form. Um, I mean, right now, no one knows about you much, and no one cares, no one in any sort of power. Who knows when they care? Hmm. But, inevitably, if you go along... Yeah. Oh, hang on, I'll tell you what I will do. 